Hello from Fine Arts. Today we are going to create pop art inspired by artist Robert Indiana. Robert created this sculpture um, in Love Park in 1976 and it previously started as a Christmas card that he made for the Museum of Modern Art. Now this sculpture became so popular that it was duplicated all over the world, including in Valencia, Spain, they made a love sculpture that says Amore. And here is the love sculpture in Jerusalem, Israel. And this love sculpture, quite interesting, he liked the smooth lines when he made this, and so he did not sign his sculpture. And this became so popular that it was created all over the world, but it was not copyrighted because he did not sign his name. So people think that Robert Indiana made all of this money from this love sculpture, when in fact he did not because of no copyright. So every artist should always sign their artwork. Today, for our love sculpture, we're going to be using chalk, which is a fun medium to use, but very messy. We are also going to be using oil pastels. And when Robert Indiana made this, he purposely chose red and green because when he was a child, his dad worked at a gas station, um, 66 gas station, and the colors were red and green and the sky was blue. And red and green are complementary colors. So today we're going to think about using colors that are complementary. And I painted this sculpture um, kind of in the complementary color so you could see it. Now, let me show you the different choices for today. So if we're thinking about complementary colors, we want to think about colors that are opposite on the color wheel. So today, you can think about red is opposite green, so maybe you want to do um, a red and green or green and red. The choice is yours. And again, we're using chalk, so today your hands are going to get messy. It's going to be fabulous. The other choices, maybe you want to do orange and blue. Orange and blue are opposite on the color wheel. And when you put them next to each other, the colors pop. They look brighter. The other choices are yellow and purple. And you could decide which way you want to do your love letters inspired by the amazing artist Robert Indiana. Now, today you do have creative freedom, so you're welcome to change it and customize it and create your art any way you want. So, the first thing that we are going to do is get our white paper, which is a square today, and I'm going to make my love uh, painting inspired by Robert Indiana. So I'm going to use his traditional colors, which were the red with the greens and the blues. So the first thing that you're going to do um, is take your white paper and you're going to fold it in half and you're going to push, push, push. And this is kind of like a hot dog. We call this horizontal. So you're going to push it across. Then you're going to open it up. Okay, and you're going to turn it the other way. And you want to be uh, careful when you're pushing it that your edges line up nice and neat. And you're going to push the other direction. Oh, it's still a hot dog because our shape is a square. So when you open it up, you have um, four squares, or we call this a quadrant. Okay, now to make our lesson easier, I always try to think about what can we do to make it easier. I have some love letters. And they are not the love letters that you get in the mail, but actual letters that spell love. So you might want to work with your partner today when you do this. Now, the first thing you're going to do is get your pencil and you're going to trace your love letters. And you're going to do one at a time. And you might have to share um, this with your table group. And so you're going to carefully hold the letter and you want to um, kind of position it inside that square and you're going to go around and you're going to basically trace it. You're going to go nice and slow. And if you make a mistake, think of it as a happy accident. 
We're going to be covering all of this with chalk and oil pastels so these lines will get covered up. So there is the first letter. Now, um, I do want to show you in the creation. The other thing you have to be careful for is making sure that your L is looking to the right so it's not backwards, okay? And the O is tilted um, like that. So it is not standing straight up and I'm going to talk in class about why he actually had it tilted which made it even more popular. You're going to have to do L-O-V and then again making sure that your E is correct that it is not a backwards and that your V is not upside down. So getting letter placement is going to be important. So please work with your table to make sure that you trace all of those things. Okay, now I have one done for us. So after you get all four letters traced, we're going to glue it on your frame. So hopefully you picked out whatever color you would like for your frame. So you're going to get your blue brush and we're going to glue it down. Now, remember that when we glue, the glue is going to go on the back of the white paper. So we're going to take our glue, we're going to twist it, and we're going to carefully take this lid off. Now this lid might have glue on the back, so set it inside the lid so you don't get glue everywhere, and then here is your brush. And when we glue, we go nice and slow. You're going to go across, with one layer of glue, down, across, and then up. Okay, and you're and you're going to try not to get glue on the frame because when we're using chalk today, the chalk could stick to the glue. So just keep the glue on the white paper. And then you're going to carefully take it, flip it over, and you're going to try to center it on your square so that you have a nice border. And then you're going to take your hands and you're going to push all those air bubbles out. I say push, push, push. And maybe count to 10 in your head. Okay. Then you're going to flip your paper over on the back of your frame. And I created a um, artist information sheet that tells about Robert Indiana. And you're going to flip that over. And when we glue an information sheet, we just do dot, dot, not a lot. One dot in each corner. And you're going to put that on the back. Push it down. And we are ready to go. Now, with your glue brush, you're going to wipe it on the side of your glue jar. Go put your glue brush brush in the hot tub so it can soak. You're going to carefully put the lid on and then you're going to twist and put your glue away. Now the next step is going to be oil pastels. So you're going to get your oil pastels and we're just going to outline our letters thinking about um, what colors are you thinking that you want to do. Now again I am creating my uh, love letters like Robert Indiana. So notice that I use the color red and then the background is going to be greens and blues because those are complementary. So I'm going to be using a red oil pastel. But you are welcome to use multiple colors if you want to do different colors or if you want to change it. Now when I do this I want to go nice and slow tracing over those letters. So if you did not uh, trace them nice and neat, now is the chance to kind of fix that because notice the oil pastels cover it up. There we go. So I want you to go over all four letters and again you can use um, multiple colors so if you want to do multiple colors you have creative freedom in art class so you are welcome to change it I am creating my art like the original 1964 Christmas card that Robert Indiana, he first made it for his friends for Christmas, then the next year he got asked to do it um, for the Museum of Modern Art. Now look, I pushed really hard, that's okay, not a big deal, just keep going. 
And you know what's interesting is that the Christmas card was so popular from the MoMA that it was turned into a stamp from the post office. And over 2 million love stamps were printed and sold. And again, he did not have copyrights on this artwork. And so it was duplicated and repeated and he was not receiving, receiving the uh, monetary benefits for that. Okay, so when you're all done, with your oil pastels just outlining. You're gonna go ahead and put your oil pastels back and we're gonna get set up with our chalk. So chalk is one of my most favorite um, mediums to use, um, but it's very messy. So today when you get your chalk, you are also going to get um, maybe a paper towel. So you can take your paper towel and fold it in half if that helps you. And then you're gonna get a baby wipe and you can fold your baby wipe also, so that your hands stay nice and clean in between colors. And if you also try not to set your baby wipe on top of your paper towel, it'll get your paper towel all wet. So you're gonna have those things to help um, with changing with the changing of color. And I'm gonna, whenever we're doing our artwork, if you look at your, two draw, your drawing guide that kind of has the samples of how we're gonna do it, um, I'm gonna do the letters first in one color, and then I'm gonna do the background. Okay, get ready for the fun. So, I'm gonna start with different shades of green. And I'm gonna pick up some light green and put it in here. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Um, if you could pick up your chalk today and your chalk is super messy, I also will have scratch papers available. So if your chalk is messy, you can take it and kind of push it on its side on a scratch piece of paper. And when you do that, it'll get it nice and clean again. So you'll have a scratch piece of paper. Notice the chalk sticks to my hands so I can wipe it on a baby wipe. Not a big deal. Okay, so I'm gonna put some green in there. And this was a more of a lime green, because I love fluorescence. Then I'm gonna take some dark green and I'm doing it on its side, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and smear, trying to keep those colors inside. Now what's interesting is the green and red, we've learned in class that when you mix complementary colors, they make brown. So if you get really close to that oil pastel, it might be turning a little bit dark and that is okay. So I'm just smearing. And the greatest thing about chalk is you can layer. So if I wanna put some more highlights, I can add in some more of that beautiful green right on top. So amazing, okay? So I'm gonna do all of my letters like that and I'm gonna go nice and slow. So I'm gonna do some green. And if you want to do stripes today, or polka dots, or rainbow, you can make it however you want. That's the best thing about art. Okay. And this chalk is very vibrant. Vibrant means colorful, really bright. It's not pastels. Robert Indiana was considered a pop artist, so his colors were um, very bright. They are not muted. Just notice the chalk dust. We're just going to leave it. Don't worry about it. So I'm using my finger to smear, going nice and slow. Okay, now your fingers might be dirty. That's okay. We're gonna wipe them on our baby wipe. Okay. And then you can take your hands and wipe them on your paper towel. Okay, now the background I'm gonna do with uh, reds and um, Oh, interesting. I did green inside to side instead of the red, like I talked about. You know what? Happy accident. I'm going to go with it. Okay, so I'm going to use red 
on my background because red and green are complementary. Now the other thing is I might want to put red, a little bit of red and a little bit of orange because ooh, actually here's a like a reddish orange just to give it some variation. Filling in the sections. So this just changes it up so I'm not using just a solid color. Well, I guess it's a happy accident. I wanted to do my colors red on the letters, but I made them green. That's okay. And then maybe I'll grab some of this ooh, pretty orange right here because red and orange are analogous colors, which means they blend well together. We're gonna try to not mix the red with the green. If you mix them, you're gonna get muddy brown. And that goes the same for orange and blue and yellow and purple. You're gonna get different shades of brown. And I'll talk about that in class. Okay, once you have all of those sections done, take your fingers and the magic happens. And you're gonna smear. Amazing. Notice that I'm not um, getting the chalk inside the green. I'm not smearing, I'm just going nice and slow. So if you wanna mix colors, you wanna mix colors that are anogalous. And I will have a color wheel in class. Anogalous are the colors next to each other. Like red and orange are anogalous, or orange and yellow, or yellow next to green. Now, if you wanted to do a background that was different than this, you are welcome to do it. If you wanna do like a rainbow on the background, again, this is fine arts, so there's no wrong way to do it. I'm actually excited, this looks amazing. So fun. Okay. If you also, if you wanted to put some um, chalk on your frame, you can, you can do that as well. Now my fingers are dirty, so I'm gonna wipe. And then I'm gonna wipe. Okay, and then you're gonna put your chalk back. When you put your chalk back on the table, please make sure that you put them in the correct um, colors where they're all separated. Now your, chalk, your artwork has chalk dust. So you can take your chalk dust and you can, um, let me show you how you're gonna do it. You can tap it on your table, tap, tap, tap. Okay, so now it is um, beautiful. We don't wanna smear it anymore. Um, now with your chalk dust to clean it up, you can take that baby wipe and you can wipe it up. I know it's so beautiful. Wipe it up. And use your paper towel to wipe it up. And come show me your amazing artwork inspired by Robert Indiana, who is actually from Indiana. He changed his last name to match his love for his state that he lived in. Okay, I hope you had fun in fine arts. Please show me your artwork and then put it on the drying rack when you're done. Until next time, bye everybody.